Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Escape Forever Free. I'm your girl, Faith. I thank you so much for joining us one more day for us to team together here to work towards restoring physical, mental, spiritual, and social wholeness. If you're coming for the first time, a very special welcome to our channel. If you are a returning visitor or a subscribed member, an extra, extra special welcome back to Escape Forever Free. This is our one hour alone time kickstart devotional guide. The aim here is to help us to work together to work towards um, to work towards um, spending at least one hour with God every single day. So you choose your best sacrificial time for the day or the week ahead and you turn up at that time as faithfully as you can and as consistently as you can. You join us for this one hour alone time kickstart devotional guide. And at the end of it, you'll continue for one hour, you and God alone. We um, especially invite those who have no such habit of spending set aside time with God every single day, that you join us to have this support so that you can build that healthy habit, draw nearer to God and learn of him who will lead you into eternal life. We're going to pray and go into our routine, so please grab your 1888 edition of The Great Controversy. It is our book that we do use for this season for our one hour alone time kickstart devotional guide. Of course, we also use the Bible, the King James Version, so grab both these book and join us. Let us pray. Holy and righteous Father, we thank you so much for another opportunity that you have given us to come before you, Father, to team together to work towards restoring physical, mental, spiritual, and social wholeness. As we go into our one hour alone time kickstart devotional guide, I pray that we personally we invite you to examine us and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. We also pray for forgiveness of sins. Father, may we individually reach out to you for um, reckoning and repenting and for rising above, Father, the fall that sin has taken on our lives between the last time we receive your forgiveness and now. We also ask that you will help us to rise up, Father, to stay surrendered to your will, and we so invite your Holy Spirit to give us this power that he alone can give us to have this success. Guide us now as we go into this morning's one hour alone time kickstart devotional and, re and reveal clearly what it is that you want us to learn for us today. When we receive it, may we receive it with rejoicing and be willing also to share so others can rejoice with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to go into our memory text. Our memory text for this week comes from John 20, verses 30, 30 and 31. It says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that they might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Again, John 20 verse 30 and 31. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of, presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. All right, so we do pray God help us to recall this in due season to glorify his name and to edify souls, including our very own souls. We're now going to go into our chapter 33. We're doing the last two paragraphs this morning. Chapter 33 of the Great Controversy entitled the first great deception we have been on it for a little while and this morning we will bring this chapter to a close so let us pick up at page 549.3 that's page 549 paragraph 3 of the great controversy it reads the theory of immortality of the soul was one of those false doctrines that rome Borrowing from paganism incorporated into the religion of Christendom. No, Martin Luther classed it with the num with the quote unquote the numberless prodigies of the Romish dunghill of the Cretals. 
commenting on the words of Solomon in Ecclesiastes that the dead know not anything, the reformer says, quote, another proof that the dead are insensible. Solomon thinks, therefore, that the dead are altogether asleep and think of nothing. They lie not, reckoning days or years, but when awakened will seem themselves to have slept scarcely a moment. We actually did read that yesterday as well. Let's continue. Nowhere in the sacred scriptures is found the statement that the righteous go to their reward or the wicked to their punishment of death. The patriarchs and prophets have left no such assurance. Christ and his apostles have given no hint to it. The Bible clearly teaches that the dead do not go immediately to heaven. They are represented as sleeping until the resurrection in as written in 1 John 4, verse 14, as well as Job 10 and verse 14, rather, verse 10 to 12. Let us turn our scriptures and read. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 14 says, For, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. We invite you to read the others as well. Continuing, in the very day when the silver cord is loosed and the golden bowl broken, according to Ecclesiastes 12 verse 6, man's thoughts perish. They that go down to the grave are in silence. They know no more of anything that is done under the sun. Job 14 verse 21. Blessed rest of Blessed rest for the weary righteous. Time B is long or short, is but a moment to them. They sleep. They are awakened by the trump of God to a glorious immortality. It says in second in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 52 to 55. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So when this corruptible shall have put on in corruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. End of quote. As they are called forth from their deep slumber, they begin to think just where they ceased. The last sensation was the pang of death. The last thought that they were falling beneath the power of the grave. When they arise from the tomb, their first glad thought will be echoed in the triumphant shout, O oh death, where is thy sting, O oh grave, where is thy victory? 1 Corinthians 15, 52-55 this brings us to the end of chapter 33, the first great deception. I do hope that we would have learned sufficient to make it clear to us about the state of the dead, that the dead knows nothing, lies asleep until the resurrection. So for the present, for the future, especially for the last days, let no man deceive us in believing that our dead loved ones can communicate, return to us or have any part in the land of the living to influence our life in any way whatsoever. It is, according to the scriptures, a fallacy that the dead has any part in the land of the living at all. So please continue to study further and enlighten your understanding on the matter of the state of the dead, because my friends, it will be a crucial factor as to whether or not you will be deceived with fallacies in the last days as the devil makes his last rush to win or to steal souls for eternal death. May God help us all to be ready and waiting and not be deceived in any way. Ready and waiting instead to go home with our Lord and Savior. Let us go to our meditational hymn as we bring this segment to a close. We do stanza three. 
Give me the Bible, all my steps enlighten. Teach me the danger of those realms below. That lamp of safety, or the gloom shall brighten. That light alone, the path of peace can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Let us pray. Holy Father, thank you so much. We've spent quite a, a, a bit of time looking at the state of the dead and this great deception that the devil has poured out over this earth that the dead um, continues to communicate and to participate in life. The same lie that he started in Eden with um, the promise that thou shalt not surely die, he continues on this earth so viciously. Father, help us not to be deceived or tricked into this fallacy. May, Father, all of us who so desire to understand the state of the dead um, continue to seek after the studies and study and seek after the truth through diligent study with the Bible and the um, spirit of prophecy writings, which makes it so abundantly clear to us. May we beg for your Holy Spirit above all things to guide us into understanding these truths, accepting it and preparing ourselves, Father, to stand up against the wiles of these deceptions that will come in stronger form as we come to the end of this controversy. Father, save us in your kingdom, we beg in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be known and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. My friend, God bless you as you now continue for your one hour alone time with God. See you tomorrow, God's willing, and please continue to stick to the Holy Scriptures, our roadmap to truth and the new Jerusalem. God bless you.